Hey, me and Matt here. This is our 30th episode, I think, of Wheels of Fury. Yeah, uh, close to it. Uh, I'll check it out. Because I know not that long ago we did 20, and I'm sure we, we've done close to 10 more since then, so yeah, I'd say this is probably 30 or around that at least. I'll check it out. Yeah. <laughs> but anyhow... Uh, before we get started with our, uh, wrestling banter for this week, which we have a lot to talk about. Oh, indeed. Really shocking things yeah. are upon us. But let's start off, we're just gonna go through the, the May Young Classic. Uh, the finals, yeah. Kyrie Sane. Kyrie Sane, the winner. Uh, congratulations goes out to her. Indeed. Uh, one thing I really think. She should be. If Oscar come to Raw, to have this uh, take team. Let's see if they can make a good take team. I know women's take teams aren't very popular. Yeah. But who knows? You know, I reckon they both fought in Japan. So. Uh. Yeah, I'm sure. Depending on what organizations they were with. In Japan, they might have been in the same company and fought together, but I mean, I remember years and years and years ago, that's what her back were going, and I'm sure you might, maybe, there was a time where they had women's tag. Yeah. Because there was a Royal Rumble for three, I think? Women, uh, women's tag team title oh. defense. It was it was Wendy Rector and oh man, what's what was her tag partner's name? Judy Judy Abel. Uh -huh, I missed that. Yeah, that but, was, was mm -hmm. that's like twenty years. Because well, I know I got the Royal Rumble on ninety three was my first pay per view. Um, that part. Yeah, it, it was somewhere in there, 90s. It was early 90s, but yeah, there was a, a women's tag title match on the Royal Rumble. Anyways, uh, we'll talk about that another time. Talk of a pack, Global Force, some really bad ones. And you know, have Garza Jr. making. Yeah, this is one. They would turn Jackson Sutter into a jealous douche. Yeah. Which I understand in some ways, but you're kind of wrecking the team. I like. It doesn't. I mean, I don't know what the deal is. Story of Lily's, you know, bright, bubbly, and all cutesy and stuff, and jumping up and down, and happy to see the fans and high five them, and yeah. so on and so forth. And uh, Braxton is of an athlete, and just the fact of Braxton Sutter being a complete douchebag to Allie is there's no point to it, it's pointless. And you know, after the match with Garza Jr. you have words in the ring and he looks pretty Allie's being the scolded child if you will so he goes to leave and then he gets back in the ring and he goes over to Allie and he's like 
I'm sorry, I lost my temper, I right? lost mm. um, whatever, and then he grabs her by the hand to kind of walk out with her, and she won't budge, and it's like, okay, he's got to be 225, roughly, 230. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely bigger than her. Moss, well muscled, and yeah. she's maybe 110. A little stick. <laughs> but the fact that he grabbed her by the hand and went to leave the ring with her and she wouldn't budge is like okay is she really that strong That's or is cool. did Braxton not want to manhandle her cause like it was basically all she did was stiffen up and wouldn't move and then you see him talking to her a little more and then finally the two of them leave the ring together, so it appears there's a riff building, developing between the two of them, and so be interesting to see where it goes. Yeah. I mean, hopefully they don't split them up, because it makes the least amount of sense in the world. No. Yeah, what? It, it doesn't make no sense, and the fact is, too, I didn't, I'm not, no, it wasn't this match. We'll get to that one later. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, so, this was a good match, nonetheless. Like, I really enjoyed Hector Garza back in the CMLL days when I used to watch it. Uh, and, you know what, his nephew's really cool. Mm -hmm. It's just the whole thing of, I don't know why it's up in his ass. You know, just kind of doesn't make any sense. Although, I can understand you don't want some guy macking on your woman. Not that he's trying to. <laughs> there wasn't any fucking macking of any kind. It was, Ali got attacked by Taryn when Ali was just having a conversation with her. And there's a stage. And, you know, Ali's telling Braxton about what happened. And all Garza Jr. did was come over, see if she was okay, and the jealous boyfriend kicked into Braxton's head, and he starts going up Garza Jr. And it's like, dude, calm the fuck down, would you? Yeah. Yes, it's a guy talking to your girlfriend, but fuck, he's just making sure she's alright. He's a gentleman. Get over yourself. Yeah. Like, seriously. So, anyway, and the grand champion, EC3, against El Gil del Fantasma. Okay, so that was the one I'm thinking of. That was cool. And it was really cool because being a fan of both Impact and AAA, mm -hmm. or Mexican wrestling in general, it's really cool to see guys like Fantasma and... Uh, Damon S mm. um, and all those guys. Yeah. So this was a good match, of course. Uh, Phantasma lost. Yeah. And now comes, of course, the debut of Pagano. Well, it was last week. Yeah. He's another awesome wrestler from AAA, and I can't wait to see what else they do with him. I would say for a debut, lackluster. Yeah. Because, I mean, basically you got the dude jumping EC3 from behind, and you got uh, Phantasma and this other dude stomping a mud hole and EC3, and it's like, okay, you've got a battle between... Triple A and uh, Impact Global Force. Not to mention the fact that I had EC3 or one. Well, that's a different topic for a different time. Yeah, I know. I, I'm getting off topic again. Oh, no. It, it's, yeah. not, it's not you're getting off topic again. It's just. <laughs> you've said your piece several times. I don't think we need to go into that again. 
No, but at least he got his ass kicked by Pagano and yeah. Tasmo, so. Okay, yeah, you're happy about that, but I mean, Powell could have had at least a substantial appearance. Yeah, I know. Well, I, know, I understand that. The thing I really enjoyed, though, was having Hector Canero as one of the judges. Yeah, yeah, that's right, too. And seeing him interact with uh, Phantasmo after the match, and you thought those two were going to get in it. So there was Hector, Dirty Dutch Mantel, and Scott Demore. So fucking amazing. And then, of course, the aftermath having Hector and Phantasmo exchange words. In Spanish. In Spanish, yes. But yeah. I'm sure it was Phantasma questioning Hector's decision, and Hector saw it EC3's way, and, you know, even though Phantasma and Hector are of the same company, Hector wasn't going to show any favoritism to Phantasma, which led to Phantasma getting back in the ring and kind of exchanging words with EC3, and then he got Pacano coming in and yeah yeah that was pretty awesome all around in a way Pacano kind of gets in clown posse just a little more uh, physical a little more hardcore if you will I guess <laughs> I don't know I think I mean when the first time I saw him he reminded me of one of the members of Misfits but that's just me I yeah, I mean, he does kind of have the Misfits of Action yeah. look. Just, if you were to take the St. Clown Posse and Misfits in Action. No, 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 I'm talking about the band, the Misfits. Oh, the Misfits. Yeah, they're a punk group. Um, regardless, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, he does have the punk rock look. Yeah. Just with... The clown face, if you will. True. Sure. So if you take Insane Clown Posse and Misfits, put them together, you've got Pacano. Yeah. Essentially. Exactly. Uh, I can't wait to see who else they bring up from AAA. Quite the entourage. Oh, it'll be fun. Going right now. Yeah. With Johnny Impact. Oh, yeah. And El Hill, De Fantasma, and Pacano now. And I want to say this, you're right, you know, Johnny Impact is fucking stupid. Because now, they're going to call him Impact. Hey, look what Impact, that's the name of your fucking show. So, why did you name him Johnny Impact? Like, seriously. And I just wanted to throw in that because... Uh, people. I know. Yeah, I know. yeah, anyways. And from that we go to uh, was this back and forth thing with Bobby Lashley and Jim Cornette. Yeah, there was the American Alpha team, American Top Team, American Top Team, which is uh, a MMA coach uh, training facility in California, which where mixed martial artists go to train and whatever. Yeah. And yeah, basically Bobby said. He wants his release from Impact Wrestling. He's going to go to MMA. He's going to fight MMA and become a world champion and all this other stuff. And uh, Jim Cornette was like, "Okay, fine. Give you your release if you go in face to face with Moose." Yeah. And we'll get to that a little later. Uh, you also had the Crash. Ha uh. You also had Crash, ha LAX, defend their Ohio versus everything and two uh -huh. two tag teams I know absolutely nothing about because I'm not really don't really follow Crash, and they pretty much showed the whole match but in like highlight form. Yes, and, and that was a good match. I got to be quite honest with you move I found really cool was one of the 
guys from one of the other teams was draped across the barricade, yeah. and then he got like a flipping dive onto him from one of the other guys. That was a, like a oh, suicide like, dive thing. It was like, ooh. Sure, I know who those guys are. I just can't remember right now. Uh, versus everybody, whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah. There you go, out of there. And of course, LAX shows up. And of course, LAX shows up. You're in Cosmo, you're not in Ohio. So, you got a few choices. You can leave or get your ass kicked. Essentially. And of course, not only do you have LAX, but you've got, you know, other members of oh, the Crash promotion. Yeah. Like Matt said earlier, even 666. Yeah. Um, yeah, there was a few others yeah. I didn't recognize. And then, there's like a bit of an altercation between the two groups. And then, uh, Ohio versus everything leaves the ring area, so to speak. And the camera's following them and they go, We were planning on leaving here without another shard of the tag titles. And it's like, well, we know where the clubhouse is. Let's go have some fun. So, um, I'd say some dastardly deeds are in the minds of mm -hmm. the brother. Fuck. Ohio versus everything. Yeah. I just gotta say what a fucking stupid uh, name. We'll talk about stupid tag team names in a minute during this show. Oh, yeah. But, uh... It's fucking, yeah. So anyway, we got that uh, great old so allegedly having one more uh, match. wrestling, and he wears some match, and he's saying, you know, American fans are the greatest fans in the world. Thank you. I love you. I'll miss you. I'm going back to Gloucester. Gloucester. Can you see? This is what really I thought about this, and you probably did too. So, because Laura Vanessa is Canadian, yeah, it's like, well, I can't marry you and I can't get my citizenship. What's well, not to say that she doesn't have a dual citizenship? You can be Canadian and live in America. Yeah, what, what's not to say that she was born in Canada and then at some point moved to the United States and lived majority of her life in the United States as well as Canada. But... Blang it up like, oh, Laurel Van Ness is Canadian, and Grado can't go to camp visa issue. Anyways, the moral of the story is, Joseph Park comes out and he's like, oh, my loss has opened up a sport and fitness group thing, and I'm going to sign you as my f the first participant. I'm going to get you this, and I'm going to get you that, and I'm going to get you everything else, and you're going to stay in America, and so, ta-da! You know, for somebody that's all that overweight, I mean, I'm overweight, and you those two hug, and the ring will just go. Yeah, you got Grado bouncing up and down, and Joseph Park is trying to do the same thing, but... His ass ain't getting anywhere off that fucking campus. <laughs> Not a chance in hell. But yeah, so no Laurel Vanessa this week. Right. Also no Congo Kong. Right. That was interesting. Yeah. So we'll see what happens next week. Yeah. And then of course you've got the False Count Anywhere match with mm. Lee and... Sanjay, duh, I'll let you take this one. Uh, fucking piece of shit. You know, it's one thing, it's one thing to... Oh, I will say this. You finally got it right. You finally got to win the title properly. But you, that doesn't take away the fact that you're a fucking piece of shit, no good fucking heck. False count anywhere, match. Yes, okay. You get fucking people... You get people interfering, whatever. I fucking see that. What the fuck was... What's his face? Caleb Conley. Caleb fucking Conley doing there. You're backstage. 
you fucking backstage beating up each other and Caleb, Caleb, fucking whatever, gets in and decides to enter fucking fear. <laughs> you know, you fucking, just fucking fuck you, you know. And now your new X Division champion fucking. <clears throat> but I will say this, you, you won fair and square. You did win fair and square, but fuck you. Because your day is coming back, and we're gonna finally fucking see somebody else hold on to fucking championship. So now there's fucking two people that I can't stand holding gold and an impact is fucking EC3 or EC3 and EC3 fucking, and fucking uh, Trevor Lee. So fuck you both, you piece of fucking shit bastard. And with that, we go on to. The big attraction, so to speak, is Moose and Lashley. And did these two ever lay waste to each other? They're beating the holy tar out of each other, and you know, up in the crowd and on the entranceway, and trash can, and big boots, and a spear, and yeah, this, that, and the other thing. But of course. Fucking American Top Team's got to get involved in like, I. But before the match, I mean, you had Lashley, Lashley come out and say, "This, I'm going with." Yeah, I'm leaving pro wrestling. I'm going home. I'm going to my real friends. I'm going to my real team. I'm going to MMA, and I'm going to win the big title, and you know, everybody got their wish, and. So on and so forth, and then, yeah, that's when Moose comes out, kicks his ass. But yeah, it was a it was a back and forth match, and you would have thought maybe Moose would get his. Unfortunately, yeah, uh, now with American Top Team lurking. In it. Yeah, oh, I mean, so Ashley's gone. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> thank you, fuck you, bye. Exactly, and uh, it's uh. Yeah, whatever. Anyways, nah. you annoying action of Taya. Oh yeah, jumped over that part. Um, it was just a, it was a wash. Well, yeah, but it was for me. It was fucking awesome. I really enjoy the way she moved into her entrance. Uh, first time I actually saw an entertaining entrance from a woman. In any wrestling promotion, yeah, I think that she is just fucking awesome. That's all I can say about that. I can't wait to see what else they do with her. And she had a little botch confrontation with Karen Jarrett. Kind of, yeah. And you know, I said this to Matt before he even got started. I watched Taya in Triple A, and she had the bad girl yeah uh routine down pretty well she was champion at the time and you know she had in her back pocket and she had this guy she was with and all this other stuff but now that she's in global force impact wrestling mm. she's become much darker yeah i, I could say that like not to a rosemary pers perspective, but just oh, I said last week that she kind of reminds me a little bit of the Undertaker in a way. Yeah, I mean you got the lights down low and the red lighting, and the slow entrance, the slow yeah, the slow walk. But when she, you're calling yourself. The queen of wrestling, or whatever the fuck she calls herself. Yeah. She has that stuck up royalty aspect to her character, which adds to it. Yeah. Like, she's not totally the stuck up, snobby, rich, rich royal person, but she has that I'm better than everybody attitude and I'm gonna prove it 
And before we go though with our next topic, topic, another wrestling school, a uh, famous Windsor, Ontario wrestling school, the K and A M Wrestling Academy. Yeah. Run by Scott Moore, they uh, Global Forces got a wrestling reality thing going on called. Uh, Global Forged, I think it's called. Yeah. Essentially, it's a bunch of up-and-coming wrestlers. One just got to Moore's school training and competing for a contract. Yeah. Which is... Meh. Yeah, I mean, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I saw one guy from Smash. Mikey Rollins. Yes, the guy who's teamed with Braxton Sutter. Yes. So, my opinion of it, though, I mean, okay, you've got guys going to Scott Moore's wrestling school and, you know, trying to get a contract with Global Force Impact Wrestling. That's all fine and dandy, but when you see one wrestling competition, you've fucking seen them all. Wow. Well, the is... same fucking thing as before. All the others. You train, you do all the, this competitive shit, and the last one standing gets a contract. What do you fucking do? If you're gonna do a get promotion, I understand you gotta earn it, but this whole competitive bullshit is ridiculous. Not necessary. If you're gonna get into the wrestling business, you go to a wrestling school, you train, you learn, you hit the indies if necessary, you wrestle for however many years in the indies, and then you eventually hit the pros, that's how you do it. And the, usually the people that do these fucking competition shows are, uh, 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 yeah, exactly. Well, well, we'll see how it goes. I mean, fuck, look at Tough Enough. I did the Tough Enough show are in WWE right now. One, maybe, if you go with the maze. Other than that, um... Well, you had me for a while. Well, yeah, but... Well, yeah. He I left. See, I see what you mean. Years ago. Yeah, I mean, these competition shows are kind of like, alright, well... Then why don't you fucking stick with it? But we'll see. I mean, you never know. And when you look at it this way, though, you get a lot of these guys who the Indies, and then they come up over to the pros, mm -hmm. and that's fine and dandy. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I think that's awesome, and I have a lot of respect for that. Also, seeing these people who haven't wrestled in their life, and mm -hmm. all of a sudden, boom, we're gonna train in WWE, TNA, whatever. Yeah, and then they become wrestlers and then you get the other guys who are athletes in different aspects like football or basketball even baseball and then they go and they're like well we're gonna go and we're gonna fucking be wrestlers mm -hmm. so it's hard to choose like like who is right and who is wrong and, and a lot of these people made it but there's a majority of them that have failed yeah, unfortunately. And one major gripe I have with this thing, with this, I don't think it'll be this, the same with this Global Forge competition, so to speak. But one one major fucking gripe I had with goddamn Tough Enough was if you're gonna have guys compete for a contract to be a wrestler, have them do competitions that have something to do with wrestling. Don't do fucking eating competitions, don't do fucking yeah. running, don't do obstacle courses and all this other shit. You go in, you learn wrestling, you... Well, whatever competition you want to do, you do it. And... That's it. And that's the thing. And this is professional wrestling. It's not summer camp. Yeah, exactly. You know, you gotta nut up or shut up. 
basically. So. And you know, even NXT in its humble beginnings yeah. was, oh, you got a group of rookies and you put them with the pros and, you know, have the pros match with the rookies and yeah, you had matches and that. But they also had the comp those stupid competitions as well. And it's like, okay, yeah, it was somewhat entertaining, but a lot of it was stupid. And then I guess somebody got the idea to, and went, hey, why don't we have NXT be a wrestling show and not a competition show? And ever since, you know, the first day they turned NXT into a wrestling show. Hey, look at how well it's doing. Look at the wrestlers that have come from NXT onto the main roster. Come from NXT to the main roster. Because in the beginning, NXT was basically doing its own thing and not giving a shit. And, and then when it became an actual wrestling show, a, a developmental wrestling show, it followed in the footsteps of Florida Championship Wrestling, Ohio Valley Wrestling, which I mentioned earlier by mistake. You know, yes, you're, you're a developmental system for WWE, but you also are your own independent yeah, brand. Yeah, exactly. Ring of Honor, same thing. Yeah. Um, what's interesting about that is I started watching Wing of Honor in 2012 when I actually found it instead of the best of. But yeah. you, you, even then, you know, you have wrestlers. AJ Styles, Kevin Steen, um, Sami mm -hmm. Zayn, Chris Hero, all these guys have gone or, uh, or WWE. And it's like, I look at someone like John Cena who says he's a free agent, and fuck you. Because these people have worked their fucking ass off in every territory that they could. Maybe, who knows. And yet, you're, you're the one that's being called a free agent. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyways, I have his impact. Yeah. It's a hell of a show. So we head to Raw, and that was a cool show. Yeah, pretty good show. Um, unfortunately, looking back, there was a picture that was shown, but there was not a lot of people out. Yeah. But, I don't know what the hell that tells you. I mean, Raw is a hit and miss, but whatever. Yeah, if you're in a building that can hold, let's say, 20,000 people. And you don't even get half of that? WWE, what you done, what you gone done? You gone done fucked up. There was a photo I saw on Facebook. And it was of somebody that went to the show that night. And they put it on Twitter, I believe it was. And... There's a whole upper section of seats that are completely empty. So the lower area was like the barricade and kind of in behind was fine. So to see that is like, wow, that's kind of sad. But also, I believe watching Raw, a lot of times you'll see camera take a wide angle shot of the ring and the crowd for whatever reason and for mainly focus on the ring and like front row seats and then behind that they didn't go to a wide angle shot and I think that's because they didn't want to show all those empty seats. Yeah that would be pretty fucking embarrassing if you ask me. And, and I mean Sure, Vance would probably be pissed. Oh, I'm not fucking doubt. Because, I mean, like, if you're not selling out the arena, or you're not getting the attendance, 
you're expecting and your live, your televised shows are dwindling? Oy. And I hear Vince McMahon say, oh, I listen to my fans, ha ha ha. Okay, well, let's look at it this way. Okay, how are you pushing the right people? How are you giving the right people a chance? Because, as far as I'm concerned, and I'll never understand why, but nobody likes Roman Reigns yet. You seem to be giving him a, a, everything that he wants, uh, in my opinion, whatever. You've changed storylines, like, whatever happened to Triple H and Kevin Owens, like, why? Why did Triple H give Kevin Owens the title and turn on Seth Rollins? Yeah. Well, of course, that was resolved at WrestleMania. From, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, there's a lot of things they have to think about. I could uh, understand a few things, but again, it's like, it's almost like the whole beach ball thing, except this time it's a lot worse. Yeah. You know? You fucking people have no respect for your company, then don't call yourself wrestling fans. Like, fucking piss off. I don't want to have... <laughs> it's hard for me to put into words because it's so fucking disrespectful. I don't care if you hate the product. You fucking buy a ticket, then go to the show and suck it up for three hours. Or how many hours they have you there. Hmm. But, no, it's just... To have an empty space... Makes no sense. And you know... Okay, Vince McMahon says he listens to his fans. Okay, fair enough. But... Maybe if you listen to your fans a little bit better... Uh, and listen to whatever legitimate gripe they might have... Hey, guess what? Those empty seats will fill! Ta-da! Like, fuck, it's not that hard. So... We began our hour with... I'm not sure, because I, again, I wasn't up at Kyle's early. Yeah, oh, what did we start off wrong with? I was... Uh, preoccupied when... Ross started, so I, like, I could hear it. I just gotta remember what it was. Uh, it was a match, I know that much. I know, uh, there was a lot of stuff that happened. Well, you had a match with uh, Roman Reigns and Jason Jordan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. So, of course, last week, because you had Jason Jordan and John Cena, and you have to have Roman Reigns and Jason Jordan. And who should win? Fucking Roman Reigns. So, what the hell does that prove? Well, Roman Reigns just wants to batter up John Cena. But I think what really would have made it interesting, my thoughts, is okay, last week you got Roman Reigns coming out and going, man, you're, you say, oh, you're the top guy, you're this, you're that, but it took you almost 30 minutes to beat a rookie, I could beat him like 20 seconds or whatever. And the match between Roman Reigns and Jason Jordan easily went as long as Cena and Jordan. So uh, if I was Cena, I would have been like, hey man, you're talking about me taking 30 minutes to beat Jason Jordan, how about you? How long did it take you? Oh yeah, uh, same amount of time pretty much, so... Yeah. Show it up your ass? Pretty much, yeah. You know what you want to talk smack? There is, your, there is your point. Although, I will say that... This week's... Smack talk session, if you will, between... Roman and Cena was the batter of the three altercations yeah, and stuff like that. I say so. It was more there, there wasn't any stalling and thinking. There wasn't any 
one one of them trying to cut off the other and talk over each other. It was cut and dry to the point, digging at each other, and yeah, I just hope it's a better match. I would say it's looking to be a interesting match. You have these two guys that are the big stars and that's great and everything. And I always say this, hype is everything and you hype up a match to the point where it finally happens and it stops you. Yeah. And it has happened before. Hell, I thought SummerSlam was going to be good. It was not that bad, but it was still dog shit. Compared mm. to WrestleMania and Royal Rumble last year. Mm. And that's just the way I see things. So, in this case, I hope this is going to be a, a pretty good match. And then, as I said before, let's see how far it goes. Yeah. You, you know... As good as Cena is on the mic, I think this go around for Roman with Cena on the mic might actually help him. I think so. Only because he's a phenomenal in ring performer. But because of the fact that he doesn't really talk on the mic all that much. His fluidity, his timing, his thought process, his words just didn't go anywhere. Mm. And then I think the first two altercations with Cena, Roman kind of went, okay, this is what it's like, this is what I'm made for. I gotta, you know, bump up my game, so to speak, and... If I'm gonna hang with probably one of the best guys on the mic. Yeah. So, I mean, that was a pretty good segment. Yeah. I, and, uh, just trying to think about what else I can remember. It's just. Big Blur? Yeah, it is, because I can't remember. Um, there was an altercation again with Brock Lesnar and. Oh, the, that's right. Braun Strowman and Strowman basically laid waste to Lesnar again. Well, this is what I thought was very cool, and I think that's what this needs is. So you've got them going at it. You got Brock Lesnar basically giving the suplex to Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman gets his ass up. Brock Lesnar turns around, looks shocked as hell. Oh, yeah. And then. Braun Strowman beats the shit right out of Brock Lesnar, which is exactly what we need to see. Yeah, I mean, usually when Brock German suplexes somebody, their ass ain't getting no. out. But with Braun, he basically landed on his back, rolled through, got to his feet, and Lesnar was like, what the fuck? And this is what needs to happen, and this is what I wanted to happen with Brock Lesnar and Samoa Joe. Yeah. And the problem with that was... Actually, I don't know what the problem was. It's, it's, it's not that... Neither one of those... You know, hype... And <laughs> then nothing. So, with Strowman and Brock Lesnar... I... Really hope to see these two fucking just... Tear each other apart. I've had a thought process going on in my head about this match for a little bit now, but I think I'll save that for when we do the prediction segment, or not, pre prediction edition of the Hills of Fury. Okay. It's up there, but I'm gonna well, reserve that. I can't wait to see it, but nonetheless, I think that this is gonna be a really good match. I'm sure it will be. If, if Braun Strowman can manhandle Fucking Roman Reigns, I can't imagine what more he can do to fucking Brock Lesnar. True. I mean, SummerSlam, that's probably the only thing, one of the only things that I really enjoyed was seeing the fucking tables go down. Mm -hmm. 
and the sandwiching between the two tables. And Brock Lesnar still gets up and kicks ass. Yeah. So, yeah. it's gonna be fun. Kind of makes you wonder if Brock Lesnar's really even human. I've been wondering that myself. Or is he just a walking cyborg? Yeah. Fuck. We also had Enzo Amore and oh, Miz. Yeah. Let's talk about a really strong promo and a shitty match. Oh my god. Well, how about we go to the beginning? Right. Okay. Apparently, Maurice is pregnant. Yes. Wah, wah, wah. But she's really pregnant, so you can't. Like, the crowd was respectful for that, at least. Other than Maurice making the announcement on Raw, what other evidence has there been that she's legitimately well, pregnant? Well, I, I don't know. She looks. I don't know. Honestly, I don't. She. Looks different. <laughs> okay, yeah, she's probably. Gains a little bit of weight. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. If you think it's kayfabe, that's fine. Well, okay, it, I kayfabe maybe, but you would think that there would be maybe hints about it on Twitter, Instagram, you know, uh, yeah. WWE.com maybe, but it was just like. Oh, we're in the ring. Here was our announcement. Take it as it is. Um, and it's like, okay, if Maurice is legitimately pregnant, bravo. Maze and Maurice are going to have a kid. That's wonderful. But maybe in the following weeks, more of a expansion on it, which I'm hoping for. But in the meantime, it's kind of like, up in the air. Yeah, I guess. But, you know, you get Enzo Amore as well, who I can't take seriously as a legit badass. Yeah, you know, Enzo's just a big goofball. He's fucking trying, I, I know. But, yeah, he's a fucking crazy ass goof. So, what happened with the whole Enzo fucking. You see, that's what's irritating because. It went from a strong promo to this stupid match, and I can understand the mess started it with the whole grabbing the mic while yeah. it's wrestling. You know, when you do a promo and you do it before a match, that's all fine and good. But if you're in the middle of a match and you grab the mic and you just start rambling the most random shit and it has nothing to do with the match well it kind of had something to do with the match but I mean for the most part it was just I think ridiculous ramble yeah I think Enzo needs to keep his ass on 205 now yeah and then of course you got the main event Drummond who took on John Cena yeah uh, this was a good match. Yeah. And like I said, I'm really looking forward to Brock Lesnar and Braun Strowman. Should be an interesting match at No Mercy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there it is. And so we head over to SmackDown. And luckily, it's still fresh in my memory. Yeah. Uh, it was a pretty, it was a better show, I should say, mm -hmm. than Raw. Although Raw wasn't as bad as a lot of people would think. It wasn't, Raw wasn't brutal or anything. There was just some things about it that weren't to the uh, uh, appeasing eye. And you had the Las Vegas night. And SmackDown, so that was pretty cool. Vegas, baby! Yeah. yeah. What happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, as they say. Unless it's otherwise. Hell yeah. <laughs> it was a fucking good place to go. And I I know that the first match must have been pretty cool. Uh, uh, the first match was 
Well, AJ Styles and Ty Dillinger for the U.S. title. Right on. Yep. And I'm sure AJ retained. Yep. So, I mean, I didn't see the match. I both very good competitors, in my opinion. Yes. I know that someday the Ty Dillinger will get his first title, hopefully, within the near future. Yeah. We got the Las Vegas street fight. With the New Day With. and the Us Us. Yes. And that's was cool. Need I say better than last week's Kenta and Chris Hero match? Yeah. Yeah, this was pretty cool. I think that Coffee Kingston is, is injured from now, what I hear. From the match. No, it wasn't from that match. There was uh, a live event they had in Honolulu, Hawaii. And I'm not sure what the match was, but uh, somehow Kofi may have gotten injured. Not entirely sure what the details of the injury are, but bad fucking timing, especially when mm, yeah. you've got was already injured. Now, yeah. per potentially Kofi injured. It's like, oh shit. Uh, yeah. Breaking up of the new day. Or, you know, fucking put Big E somewhere else. I don't know. At this point, I don't know what they're gonna do. And that's a goddamn shame because these are legit. They're a really good tag team, despite what people say. And one of the last stables in WWE. Yeah. And now they're fucking pretty well all injured. Oh no, we still got Big E. Well, I mean, yeah, we still have Big E, yeah. but what they do with them, I don't know. Uh. Because, you know, they have, they still have the titles. I well, think. they won the titles from the Usos. Yeah, so. In the street fight, yes. So, could you have maybe Kofi and Woods with the tag titles and maybe give Big E a bit of a singles push until the two of them get better? Or maybe if Kofi got hurt, it's not too bad, so him and Big E can defend the tag titles. We'll go with it for now and see what happens and hope for the best, really. It's just a shame. I mean, those guys really did, I think, deserve the tag team championships. Bro broke the mold of the mm. traditional tag wrestler. Yeah, you know, they brought back the... Freebird free Yeah, exactly. With that whole, anybody can wrestle in that team, in the stable. Yeah. And it's unfortunate that this has happened. I really think that it's, well, bad timing. Yeah. Once again. But we'll have to keep an eye and an ear out for right now as to the potential of what Kofi's injury is and what the extent of the injury is and go from there. Yeah, I guess so. We'll see when time calls, I guess. Um, uh, you had... Naomi against Natalia. Oh yeah, a and rematch. You, and you got fucking Carmella on mm. commentary with that fucking Ellsworth and a dog collar <laughs> and a lace. And I was like, holy fuck. 1980s cold, they want their wrestling, uh, or they want their stipulation back. I'm sorry, that's got to be the funniest shit ever. Oh, I mean, yeah, oh, Ellsworth I'm... already looks like a turtle. I don't fucking want to see... <laughs> Can I all treat him like a fucking pet? Yeah, really. In fact, why don't you go the whole nine yards, get a ball and chain, put it around his fucking, well, he doesn't have a chin to support it. Mm. Give him a little leather mask. Let's do the whole S&M thing that 
Goldust tried to carry in the late 90s with Luna. Uh, that might not go over very well. No, not this day and age, unfortunately. No. But, I mean, that's kind of like how they, uh, this is going. Yeah. Unfortunately, Naomi didn't win. And yeah. so Natalia retains the title. Mm-hmm. Uh, just okay. Yeah. So, I don't know when Carmella's going to cash in. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of time. Yeah. Uh, I think that, yeah, it's just a matter of time, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, I don't, don't want to get to the main event, well, the main event. Yeah. Now. Um, we had Chad Gable and Sylvan Benjamin against the Hype Bros. Okay. See, I missed that match. Oh, okay. Wait. It, it looks like maybe the Hype Bros are going to be no more. It looks like, yeah, it, and I, and I kind of predicted that. See, then that's what usually happens. You know, uh, a tag team partner will get injured, then they'll come back, and depending on how long they were out, mm -hmm. reevaluate their position, mm -hmm. which is kind of a shame, you know, because what are they going to do with Zack Ryder as a heel? I don't understand. Mm -hmm. And what kind of a push are they going to give Mojo? Well, Mojo deserves it because... Oh, I agree, but I mean, to what extent? I don't know. Yeah. The guy fucking... And here we go with the Andre the Giant Memorial Reward... Uh, Battle fucking Royal. You know, you got a years. You're fucking out. Barry Corbin lost his shot. Big Show's too fucking old. Mojo Rowley. You have the perfect guy. Yeah, he goes batshit crazy. Use him in something. Jesus, you know, this guy deserves a shot at something. You didn't give Baron Corbin something right now. Let's see how well this works. I want to see how this goes. If you're going to have him feud with Zack Ryder, fine. That's all good. But I want to see, if not the WWE title, which is too early for Mojo, the Intercontinental title. Or wait. You're going to have to go to Raw for that one. Nah, I'm thinking about the United States. Mm. But do something with that. You know, it's it's fucking time. You, you, you made the battle royal for a reason. And now it's just a big slap in the face. Yeah, it's like, okay, we'll have a memorial trophy for the best big man of all time. And you want to honor him and everything. But as far as the people that have won that trophy so far, out of the four, only one has really been... Uh, d gone somewhere and done something. Yeah, it's just pathetic. But, you know what? It's still early in the game. I mean, we'll see what happens next week. This was only the beginning of the breakup. But I want to see somebody go somewhere. Yeah. You lost it with Baron Corbin. Fuck you for that. Hmm. Let's go somewhere with Marjo Raleigh. Let's see what this guy can do. He's over with the fans. Just do something with him. Mm -hmm. Or, here's an idea. Don't put the Battle Royal on WrestleMania. Forget the Battle Royal altogether because obviously it was a big waste of time. And you know what else is a big waste of time? Uh, money in the bank means nothing anymore. I mean, fucking Baron Corbin lost that. He lost that. 
Now why? Because John Cena was a pussy because he lost his opportunity last year. So, well, let's see. Oh yeah, the first uh, women's money in the bank. Oh, Turtle Boy had to win that for him. Okay, so we had one on SmackDown. It didn't really count because you knew that Carmella was going to win. So there's two things, two things that you fucked up and you are, you know, what's next? Hmm. Anyway, uh, yeah, there really isn't a whole lot of that else that happened on SmackDown. We pretty much covered it. So as we get on with the big one, well, yeah, the, the big developing story so what happened was last week you had kevin owens come out talk shit about shane's family and talked about the plane crash which interesting mm. um and that to me is what a heel should be because you have all these skills that are kind of being cheered by the fans some are, some aren't. Most of them are because they're cool. Mm. Kevin Owens and you know what? Even the Miz are legit heels because yeah. they get booed by the fans. Yeah, everybody mm -hmm. boos them, and you know he knows what he's doing. So this week you had Vince McMahon come out, seventy-two-year-old Vince, yeah. who shouldn't have no business being in the ring anymore yeah he comes in he calls out kevin owens kevin owens disrespects him okay whatever so mcmahon goes and actually i was very impressed with uh his smack talk offense Pop vince has been doing that for goddamn forever <laughs> oh i know but this was cool like, you can avoid your bowels and then, mm. and whatever he said, it was yeah. fucking awesome. And then you get the headbutt heard around the world. Kevin Owens headbutts Vince McMahon, and he bleeds because Vince is a fragile old man. Mm. So you get guys coming out, you know, carrying fans. Kevin Owens beats the shit out of fans. You know, that's just. So there is going to be a Hell in a Cell match mm -hmm. at Hell in a Cell with Shane McMahon and uh, Kevin Owens. So now that Kevin attacked Vince, who knows what's going to happen next week. Mm. Yeah. Well, Stephanie came up with that one. It wasn't too much. No. That's fucking weird. Yeah. And of course, you know, they got referees and Stephanie trying to help Vince to the back. Like, oh, my ribs! My ribs! How about the fucking gas in your head? Uh, yeah. And I mean, you could instantly see there was a mark right pretty much in the middle of his forehead. It was a perfect circle. And then, of course, he starts bleeding. And, you know, there's been some discussion about bleeding in WWE lately yeah but I mean I don't really think too much is gonna become of it because you know okay Kevin headbutted Vince Vince's skin isn't as tough as it used to be and he bled what, what's gonna happen have Vince find himself where the money's only, only going to go right back to himself. So, so that won't work. You can't really d discipline Kevin Owens because Kevin Owens is a heel and he was just doing, he was just basically making things more interesting to lead up to Hell in a Cell. So, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen next week, but it's going to be interesting. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it's raw. That's basically what it is. It's all, you know, it's jaw jacking. It's getting a lot personal. Mm. I mean, 
I mean, I would thought you would see that kind of stuff in a PG kind of era, but... Then the fact, too, is, yeah, fans blading. Because you would think, why would you even think about doing that at your age? Because there's no way I could headbutt you and you're going to bleed just like that. Well, go back to the altercation uh, with Samoa Joe and Kurt Angle when Kurt Angle first debuted in TNA. It was the same situation. Kurt Angle had bought Samoa Joe. What happened? Samoa Joe is bleeding. So, I mean... And, you know, the forehead is, like, the easiest it's spot to bleed from. I yeah. mean, you watch any... Well, majority of mixed martial arts fights, and most of the time, you're going to see people cut and bleeding from the forehead. True. It's just... An easy spot to target for cuts and bleeding. Why? I don't know. Just the way it is. Yeah, no, I agree. I think that you know what, I either have blood or don't have blood, but I think they're finally getting to the point now. The WWE is, you know what, that is fuck it. just, yeah, fuck it. Let's just do. What we did before, and we won't do it all the time. Yeah. But we're just gonna do it because that's what entertains the majority of the audience. And and I think that whether you agree or not, that's a smart thing to do. You yeah. Know? You want to keep it kid friendly, so to speak, but you also want to keep the older fans entertained, mm -hmm. whether you're into that sort of thing or not. Yeah. Uh, so, to me, yes, I thought that was interesting, and I can't wait to see how this goes. Unfortunately, I don't know if this is going to be a Hell in a Cell match for Shinsuke and uh, Jinder, which I think is a fucking shame. Yeah. I hope that's not the case, because it's called Hell in a Cell for a reason. Yeah. Don't fucking have Hell in a Cell if you're just going to have one Cell match. Mm. That is so... It's fucking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Anyways. So I got uh, 205. Yeah. 205 is pretty good. Yeah, fairly really decent. I... Again, more surprises were had. Mm. Jack Halliger is a heel. Apparently, yeah. Which... Okay, I, don't, I never saw that coming. Mm -hmm. It's another one of those, if you can't beat him, join him. Essentially. Uh, you know, he and Kendrick have been having issues for months. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I haven't got the Cruiserweight Championship, so fuck it, I'm just gonna turn heel. Which, okay, we already saw his evil facial expression. I just can't wait to see what he'll, he'll Jack Gallagher is going to be. Because, mm -hmm. you know, like I said before, there are certain wrestlers who can pull off being a heel and being a face. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, the Miz turning face was a bad idea because I don't think it came naturally to him. Yeah. Um, Taz. Yeah. It didn't really come naturally to him. Mm -hmm. Well, at least Taz on the TNA days. Taz and ECW kicked ass. Yeah, Taz really wasn't a face in ECW. He was just a ass kicker, and that's it. Yeah, pretty much. So, you know, you have that. Uh, what else happened then? Rich Swan versus... DJP! Yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah, he is fucking annoying. Nah. I mean, I don't know. I don't know how to take this whole, you know, friendly competition. Yes, I've been doing this all night. Mm. But yeah, this is kind of weird. Uh, friendly competitions don't end up with one having uh, two guys mm. talking shit and 
you know. One guy being sour and one guy being a goofball and shit like that. Well, and this is, you know, another thing that they fucked up. They, mm. they turned TJP heel very quick. Mm. And now he's, like, in the middle, it seems. Yeah. Which is really stupid. I didn't mean it worked for The Rock. I don't think it's gonna work for this guy. Yeah. Well, Cedric Alexander was wrestling Brian Kendrick when the old Jack Gallagher thing happened. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Drew Gulak come out and he's basically promoting more of this no high flying stuff and it's oh, like, yeah. eh, whatever. Yeah, that gets old pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how long we're gonna keep this goddamn gimmick up. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Well, that was 205. Not really fun. Mm. Uh, except for Jack Halloher returning. It was not as good as I thought, I guess. I thought it was, but there's a lot of stuff that I'm missing, I know. Uh, you know, the Jack Gallagher heel turn, if you will, was interesting, but it wasn't an oh my god moment. No, not really. And he, and he didn't really use Neville this week. Like, he showed up on Raw. Yeah. But that was basically it. Yeah, pretty much. So, 205 was uh, mediocre. Yeah. Which, well, it is what it is. Yeah. NXT was awesome, no? Yeah, NXT was good. Uh, again, trying to think about what happened, I just saw it. Well, there was a really interesting thing that happened. You had uh, Billy Kay and Peyton Rice, and it was supposed to be a tag match oh, yeah. against Ruby Riot, and... Hey, she come on. Part- well, hold on. Oh, yeah, okay. So know your horses, buddy. Yeah, I know. It was supposed to be a tag match with Ruby Riot and a partner of her choice. But Ruby came out on her own because apparently she thought she didn't need a partner. So the bow ring, the match is going on. Billy and Peyton are basically kicking the shit out of Ruby. And then lurking from the saddles through the crowd, here comes fucking Nikki Cross and it's like... What the fuck is she doing? <laughs> and then there's a moment where Ruby writes in the corner. Nikki tags herself in. She goes in. She pretty much lays waste to Billy and Peyton. Tags in Ruby. Walks away. Ruby gets the win. Yeah. So that was... That's an interesting development. The potential for Ruby and Nikki to be allies? Oh, that'll be a hell of a take team. Yeah. Because at this point, I'm not sure what's going on with Sanity at this point. Yeah, the rest Uh, of the members of Sanity. uh, I think they might be turning face. I don't know. uh, With the whole thing with Cole and Dragon, I have no idea. Oh, by the way... I read on the interwebs that apparently they have a team name. Mm. And do you know what that team name is? Hmm. Undisputed Era. <laughs> undisputed Era? What fucking man? What are you doing? You're not undisputed anything. No, you haven't even got it. You can be called the. Uh, oh, I can't be called the Outsiders. You, you know. Why not have a fucking good name? And I knew it. I knew that this was too good to be true. I mean, what the fuck have you guys done to earn the title Undisputed? Fucking nothing. Okay, yeah, you're outsiders. Yeah, you come from Ring of Honor. Yeah, you were champions in Ring of Honor. Tag champions. Ring of Honor world champion. And you've come, all you've done is come to NXT and run rough shot over fucking Drew McIntyre, 
sanity. They uh, sneak attack. Beat Dunn. There's a, a match for the United Kingdom Championship yes. between Beat Dunn and uh, Wolfgang. Wolfgang. That was cool. That was, that was a event. good match. That was the main event. And that was pretty fun. Pretty, yeah, Pete Dunne ended up getting the win. Yeah. And these three come out. And, you know, they're beating up Pete Dunne. And Wolfgang gets in there. Pete Dunne basically fucks off. Doesn't give two shits. But seriously, though, what the hell are you guys doing even remotely calling yourselves the Undisputed Era? What, are you self-entitled sons of bitches that haven't done a fucking thing other than maybe kiss somebody's ass? Like, seriously. The dishonorable rebels, I can understand because you're filming of honor and you're dishonorable, whatever. The fact of the matter is, I knew this would happen. You bring two really, three really great talented guys from a different company and somehow you can't think of a good fucking name, so there you go. And it's not like we can't just grow into it, you know. Why? 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 It's just, you know, before we go any further, you know, let's talk about... I heard a rumor saying that the Four Horsewomen match idea thing with, you know, the MMA Four Horsewomen and the WWE Four Horsewomen Vince McMahon is gonna want to throw that out the fucking window and I'm like you know what better opportunity what better opportunity to go to the fucking Survivor Series have your best women in a WWE go against these women of MMA you know Shayna Baszler one of the best tough women in the Mae Young Classic and who knows what she's going to do well, who knows if she's going to go to M back to MMA or maybe to NXT or maybe to SmackDown or Raw who knows the fact of the matter is you had the backstage excitement you know with Becky Lynch uh, Charlotte Flair Bailey and all and think that's it you know do something the Survivor Series has to have this match this match is money it appears like Vince is just throwing it away I don't know there's probably a draw there but I mean you'd have to have if you are going to have the match at least have a development to it and a build up to it don't just go oh you call yourself or you call yourself the four horsewomen no we're the four horsewomen let's have a match yeah go fuck yourself yeah i know i and I, I understand where you're coming from i just think these women should have a match to see who is best you know but i think it would be pretty cool but that's only my opinion. Okay, so. you can have a match to find out which of the two factions is the best, but at least have some sort of storyline to it, because right now it's just, okay, Ronda Rousey, Jasmine Duke, and the other chick are talking with WWE.com about one of Santa Baszler's wins and then you got fucking Becky, Bailey, and Charlotte walk over and Rhonda goes, you name the time, you name the place, and it looks like she's about to throw it down. And then Charlotte, Becky, and Bailey walk away. Okay. I mean, no. if there's going to be a grudge, so to speak, about, you know, two groups of females, Having the four horsewomen name work with it. Don't just don't just half ass it. That's right. It really wasn't until the May Young Classic where there was 
Chicano a dissension of like the two four horsewomen groups because you know Ronda Rousey and that group was doing her own that their own thing. Charlotte, Becky, Bailey, and Sasha were doing their own things on Raw and SmackDown, and then once. Shayna Baszler got named as one of the participants in the Mayon Classic. That's when there would be the introduction, so to speak, of the other four horse women, woman group. And so you have the two of them, the or six of the eight, out in the parking lot, I think, and having that altercation with each other but I think it'd be there's potential there for it being a good match and a good maybe rivalry if you will but yeah work with it it'll be interesting yeah so then we head to Ring of Honor R.O.H. 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 It, I gotta say, it's pretty interesting when you have uh, Bully Ray be the voice of reason. Yeah. In a way, like, I know the Briscoes had some issues with losing to the boys mm -hmm. in Dalton Castle. Mm -hmm. And then, of, of course, you get, uh, <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, you get, uh, Bullet Club, the Bullet the Club, tag and the, 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 the six man tag titles from Dalton and the Boys. Yeah, so that was pretty interesting. I well, like I really do enjoy seeing the Young Bucks and all those guys. Yeah, they're a pretty much a DX slash NWO ripoff, but whatever. Mm. It's still pretty cool just to see them. I didn't see Jay Lethal. No. This week. Yeah. I think there was a eight man tag match with uh Seek and Destroy against oh, yeah. the Bull Club. Yeah, that was a good match actually. Yeah. And interesting too, just to mm -hmm. see uh Motor City machine guns in a different light. Yeah. And of course, in if you don't remember, like uh, we do, uh, you know, Motor City Machine Guns and Young Bucks were once in TNA. Mm -hmm. So to see these guys face each other at Ring of Honor was pretty cool. Yeah, Young Bucks and TNA were known as Junction Me yeah. at the time. That's right. Uh, no, because they in. in yeah, no Kazarian and Daniels. No, not. No, they weren't there. Uh, War Machine, they, I, I don't think they wrestled this week. No. Cheeseburger! Oh, yeah, they're hyping up Cheeseburger and Will Ferrara, them two splitting. Yeah, that's that was pretty. Like, I'm not sure where they're going with it, but they keep having the cheeseburger getting attacked, as always. Mm. There's still that match hype up of Cody versus Suzuki. Suzuki. Minoru, yeah. Minoru Suzuki. Yes. Which, uh, very fucking badass. I can't wait to see him. But yeah, if Cody Rhodes, he's backstage. He's talking to whatever the guy's name is. He's like, I was going to make you kiss my ring, but kiss it. Yeah, uh, and then there was there was a, a thing where, yeah, Bullet Club walking by Dolan Castle and they're kind of poking fun at them or whatever, because, you know, having just lost a six-man tag title, yeah. and then fucking Cody jumps on from behind and two of them are fighting outside. Oh, and, yes, that is, yes, I remember that now. Cody hits him with a window washing bucket or recycling bin or whatever the fuck it was. <laughs> yeah. Mm, that was a pretty good show and like you know I usually remember what happened 
but these last two weeks of watching Ring of Honor, I only remember bits and pieces like the yeah. main event. I'm trying to figure out who it was, and I'm pretty sure I know who wrestled in the main event, but I can't think of it right now. Mm. So I will, if I find it, I will put it in this video. Yeah. Uh, Smash Wrestling, mm -hmm. another good show, yeah. which uh, I'm very happy that it's, you know, being televised now. Yeah. We already saw MVP make his debut. We've seen Cody Diener last week. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I forgot to mention that. Mm -hmm. So, no, this week was pretty good. O only thing I can help you with is the last half. That's all I got. Okay. Well, I feel ashamed that I don't remember what happened because I just saw the damn thing. Yeah, just tell me what happened. Well, what uh, what I saw, I didn't see the whole show. What I did see was the match with Michael Elgin and Zack Saber Jr. That's right. Okay, so. That I do remember. Okay. Yes. He won. He won. Okay. And, you know, uh, it's coming this way to Peterborough. In okay. November. We've got Peterborough, and uh, we got my hometown of Colbert. We got a bunch Toronto. Of, Toronto, a bunch of other yeah. places. Toronto, a bunch of times. There's a college they're going to. One yeah, month. Fanshawe's in London. It's gonna be good. I can't wait to see who wrestles this time. But yes, Big Mike and Zack Sabre were very cool. That was a good match. Yes, I really enjoyed that. It's just very, you know, I have to start paying more attention, I guess, because I do know I watched it. So, it's just a matter of why can't I fucking yeah. think. You know. Mm. So anyways, that was pretty much wrestling uh, this week. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel ashamed that I can't remember half the shit that I saw. But that's not to say it was it was terrible. It was actually very good. I'm pretty sure I'll see repeats. So I will watch that and possibly put it on here. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be on again or... So, At some point or something. But this was a good show. I'm glad that we got to do more, expand more mm -hmm. uh, with the scenery. Um, but it was a good show, you know, and good wrestling. And we'll see what happens. No Mercy's coming up. Yeah, so, so stick around stay for tuned. that one. Yep, this is going to be fun. I can't wait to see it. And uh, we're 